If I wanted to land a software engineering internship in 2025, this is exactly what I would do. Now, the absolute first thing that I would do is make sure I start preparing early, getting in the habit of doing maybe one lead code question a day, fine tuning my resume, taking my time with it and not cramming last minute, and just making sure I was aware of what the interview cycle actually looked like and what was expected of me for junior developer jobs or for internships. I made this mistake back in 2020 when I landed my first internship of not really preparing until I had my first job interview lined up. In fact, I got my first screening call and I had never even done a lead code question. I was fortunate enough to be able to pass it. And then I spent the next month absolutely cramming, being super stressed, spending hours hours upon hours every single day prepping, so I was able to land a job at Microsoft. Now that worked out for me, but that's definitely not what I would recommend. So if I could go back, I would really get in the habit of preparing for interviews super early. I'm talking about months before they came up, making sure my resume was ready. I had some great projects set up. And that way, when it came time to start sending out applications and eventually getting those interviews, I was already prepared and I just needed to do some last minute brush up rather than stressing and cramming like so many people do. So if you're watching this video and you do want to land an internship, I would do the following. Start doing at least one leak code or hacker rank or kind of interview style question every single day. Make sure your resume is ready. Look at it over a few days, send it to some friends, make sure that it's super polished and prepare your programming projects and make sure they're ready to go and they're clean so that when you do really get into the high season of interviewing and sending out applications, all you have to do is that. You don't need to do all of the other preparation work, which really is extremely time consuming. Now, speaking of preparing, I've actually been working on something for the past past month now behind the scenes, and I'm going to be releasing it in just a few days. Now, this is going to be much more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of mentorship program. I really want to take some people under my wing, help them land these type of positions, and give them that more guided one-on-one -on -one support that I know a lot of you need. Now, initially, I'm just going to be opening up 10 spots. This is the first time I've done something like this, so I want to make sure it's extremely valuable for a really limited group of people, and I'm opening a waitlist for it right now. So if you do want to join the waitlist and be informed when it does go live, then click the link in the description down below. And as a thank you for filling out the little form that I have there, I'm going to give you access to an unlisted video, which shares a bunch of secrets and raw realities of becoming a software engineer and really how to level up your career in 2025. Anyways, I'm excited about this program. Again, it's only going to be for 10 people. So if you do want to get on it, join that waitlist from the link below. With that said, let's continue and talk about how to land that internship. All right, so the next thing I would really want to focus on is building two really solid programming projects. Now I say two because you want to focus on quality over quantity, and it doesn't help you to have six, seven, eight different programming projects on your resume. Companies want to see that you're able to build something and that you can do this on your own and make something impactful. You don't need tons of different projects to showcase that. You just need one or two really well done ones that demonstrate that you do understand what software engineering is, you know how to build software, and ideally you can build something that actually solves a real world problem. So I'm going to give you some tips here to focus on for your programming projects, and especially as an entry level engineer, these are so important and they can really help you stand out and be a great talking point during your interview. Okay, so let's get into it. The first thing is that this project needs to solve a problem. Everyone's seen the sorting algorithm visualizers or the to-do list apps. You need to try to build something unique and ideally something that relates to you or someone that you know. With that in mind, you also want to try to have your project have at least one user that's not you. If you can have other people using what you've built, even if it's just one person, like your mom or dad or brother or a friend of yours, that really shows that you're putting the user first, which is something we do all the time in software development. So try to get someone else to use your project or build it around a particular use case for them. So that way you can really talk about all of the challenges related to the user and how you built specific functionality, features, how you collected feedback, feedback, all of those important concepts which companies are looking for. Beyond that, your project needs to be easily accessible. If I have to download a ton of software or run some complicated script or it's buggy or difficult for me to open, I'm just not going to look at it. Ideally, it should be a website link. You click it, it opens up and it's a one click install or a one click view. That's what companies are looking for. And that's probably the only way they're actually going to view the programming project you have. 
Now, lastly, it needs to have some kind of wow factor and be professionally done. If I go to your website, the first thing I should think is, oh, this is interesting. I haven't seen this before. Let me keep looking. You have to hook someone immediately and you can do that with the description of the project or what they see immediately when they open it up. Make it something interesting, make it something unique and make sure that when I view it, I don't think this was made by a junior level software engineer. Try to make something that's super impressive, right? Really focus on the quality here and ensure that if someone does view this project, they're immediately impressed. If you have one or two of these on your resume, I promise this will help you a ton. And again, you can really come back to these as talking points during your interview and demonstrate that you do know the skills for the job based on what you achieved with these various projects. So now that we've got the projects out of the way, it's time to put them on a resume. And I would focus on really making sure that my resume is absolutely perfect here, because this is one thing that you have unlimited time for, and there's really no excuse for it being bad. Now I can tell you firsthand, I have reviewed hundreds of resumes. A lot of people send them to me to review or because they were applying for my startup previously, and most of them are absolutely horrible. I made an entire video on this, which I will link here, but here are a few quick tips to keep in mind for the resume so that yours isn't as bad as a lot of the other ones that I reviewed. Now, first of all, no spelling mistakes, no grammatical errors. Make sure that the English is perfect. If English isn't your first language, use AI, send this to people that do know English really well and get five, six, seven people to audit your resume and really review it as much as you possibly can. Next, make sure that you don't have any irrelevant experience. No one cares if you worked at McDonald's or you were the captain of the football team back in high school and get rid of all that stuff. Having it on your resume really just makes you look like an amateur and it'd be significantly better to show those two programming projects earlier up on the resume rather than highlighting some irrelevant experience at some random job that has nothing to do with software development. Next, for all of your resume points, you wanna put them in the following format. Some kind of action you took, some kind of task or responsibility you had, and then some outcome or some impact that you achieved, ideally that's quantifiable. Let me give you an example here of a great resume point. I developed and deployed a scalable e-commerce platform for a client, integrating payment gateways and third-party APIs, resulting in a 40% increase in online sales within three months. See that it says what you did, the type of responsibility or task that you had, and the impact, ideally quantifiable, in this case, 40% increase in online sales within three months. If you can do that, it's gonna make this seem a lot more professional and demonstrate that the work you're doing actually does something and has a real world impact. Now, lastly, it's important to adjust your resume based on the type of roles that you're applying for. I'm not saying you need to change this for every single application, but a lot of times you will have automatic scanners or the ATS systems that are checking your resumes. So make sure you put all of the keywords that are included in things like the job listing. If you're applying for a back end role and then you apply for a front end role, obviously tweak your resume accordingly and make sure that you put the different technologies, tools, skills, all of that kind of stuff. So you pass that automatic scanning and ideally actually get viewed by a human. So many people just make the resume once and they never adjust it. That's a huge mistake. You can constantly tweak it and especially things like the list of skills, you can modify that and uh, kind of change that based on the positions you're applying to. So while I'm preparing, I've got my programming projects done and my resume is now solid and ready to go. I'm gonna be focusing on networking and building meaningful connections. Now, yes, we obviously wanna get referrals. We wanna to try to network with hiring managers and recruiters and all of those decision makers at companies, but that's easier said than done. So I'm gonna give you some more practical advice here, which really worked well for me. And I don't see a lot of people talking about. Now, this is just actually try to make friends with other aspiring software developers, people that are maybe classmates of yours. If you're in something like a computer science program, maybe people you meet at hackathons, even people online and forums, stuff like that. Just try to actually make friends, get to know people, be charismatic and build a real relationship. Most of the jobs that I've actually been offered now, especially as I get a little bit older outside of school, have come from friends of mine. People that I knew during school, people that I met at some kind of event, even if we're not super close, since they know I'm in software development, they immediately reach out to me whenever they have some kind of position or they know that some opportunity opens up. As well as that, I also get to hear all of the insights that they have and hear what jobs they're landing, where they're working, how they were able to get an internship, what their interviews are like, the type of questions they got asked, and all of that really does help you land positions in the future. So make sure that you are networking with as many people as possible, as much as you wanna go up to the people that already have experience and can maybe hire you or give you a referral. Also, the people that are trying to do the same thing as you are important to get to know because there's a lot of tips and insights you guys can share with each other. And 
I promise you, the more people you know trying to do this, the more you're going to learn about it and the more you're going to see what's working and what's not working from real world experience from all of these people you know. So once I did all that, I would then focus on putting out a ton of volume when it comes to number of applications but with the strategy in mind. Now, I would personally be targeting at least 10 applications per day, probably more than that realistically, like as many as I could do consistently every single day, but I would focus on the following. First of all, I would try my best to get soft intros and referrals. Now, getting a proper formal referral is pretty difficult. So if you could even just get some kind of email introduction, if someone can connect you with a hiring manager or just any human being at the company, your chances immediately increase because now you're actually talking to a human and you've got past all of the AI, all of the screening, all of that kind of stuff. That's really the main goal here. You want to get in touch with humans as quickly as you possibly can. I know that's difficult, but it does drastically increase your chances. Now, I also would be focusing on applying to more smaller companies, startups, mid-sized companies, and not really going for a ton of big tech. Now, sure, big tech is fine to apply to, but your chance of getting a big tech interview really is just like searching for a needle in a haystack. You have to be extremely lucky. You have to know someone. You have to have some kind of referral. It's very difficult. So don't be discouraged if you apply to, you know, the best companies in the world, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Facebook, etc., and you don't hear anything back. I would be more concerned about trying to get in at a smaller company first, getting that stamp on my resume, and then moving up the ladder later on once I had a bit more experience. Now, I would also try to get a little bit creative here and try to look for jobs and maybe not the standard way where it's not as competitive. And I'll give you a great example. So one of the students that just came out of my software development program, he actually landed a job in about three weeks after finishing the program. Now I interviewed him and I asked him, how did he do this? And he said he actually found it through Facebook marketplace. He said that he was looking on Craigslist. He was looking at Facebook marketplace. He was looking in forums. And he was going places where people were asking for developers, but didn't know where to find them. Through this, he was able to get in contact with a manager at a small company in Canada. He had an interview and then he got hired for the job. So not a way that I would think that you'd be able to land a job, but he was creative. He did this super fast. And he said that that was where he was finding the most success was in these kind of forums and Facebook groups in places that most people aren't swarming to and sending a ton of volume to. Now, of course, there's also a ton of platforms you can use LinkedIn, Glassdoor. Uh, what else do we have here? Angel list. There's also a platform I just found called WellFound. This is great if you're applying to startups specifically, which I think are easier to get in the door with. And again, just focus on getting some kind of job. The quality of your first job isn't as important. You just need something so you have that real world experience. Then you can start climbing that ladder. Now, the last major tip I have for you here is apply, even if you don't have all of the requirements. A ton of people get super discouraged because they say, you know, massive lists of requirements on tech jobs. The reality is most people writing these job descriptions aren't in tech themselves. They're in human resources. They don't actually know what's required for the job and they just list a ton of stuff or copy other ones online. So even if you don't perfectly match the description, still apply to the job as long as you meet, you know, a good amount of the criteria and you'll be surprised because a lot of jobs I actually ended up getting offered. I didn't even know some of the languages that they had on the list. And when it came to the interview, what they were telling me they wanted versus what was on the job posting was completely different. So ideally at this point, if I did everything I mentioned in this video and I was being strategic, I should have got a few interviews. If I'd put out hundreds of applications, I would expect to at least get one, two, maybe three interviews. And to give you some perspective here, even back in 2019, when I was applying for internships, I would say I was overqualified compared to most computer science students having my YouTube channel and all of this kind of stuff. And I still applied to about 90 companies and I only got three interviews. So just to give you some kind of perspective there, like I wasn't getting a great response right back then. Anyways, you do need to put in a ton of volume. Point is, I'm hoping at this point I would get some interviews. So now it's time for some interview tips or how I would ace the interview. Now, first of all, I would go into an interview being professional. A lot of people kind of dress like tech people. They don't get a haircut before. They're not clean. They're not well shaven. They're not wearing maybe a nice dress shirt. You don't need to wear a full suit, but at least like kind of look nice and presentable. I would go in there. I would speak with confidence. I would ensure that I let them know, yes, I'm fit for this job. I know how to do this. I have experience and I know that I'd be a great match for the team. So many people are really nervous. They're really reserved. They're umming and they're awing. They don't know the kind of the typical interview answers. So make sure you rehearse all of those and you can go in there and be super 
super confident. I would also make sure that I bring a copy of my resume. Now I know this is a little bit outdated, but I still like to do this. I would print out three or four different copies of my resume in a little folder, bring that to the interview. And even if you don't need to use them, it's a great thing to show that you're coming prepared. You're taking the initiative. If there are multiple people there who haven't seen your resume, you can give it out to them. And of course you can reference your resume yourself. I would also ensure that anything I say in the interview, I back up with experience and with proof. If I tell someone, yes, I'm really well experienced in Python, I would say, because I've done this, this, and this, I built this project. I taught this course. I worked on this freelance project. I took this course in university. I would make sure that I always relate things that I say in the interview back to major points that I have on my resume and to experience that I have in real life. I would also ensure that I study up on the company. I know the mission and the value statement of that company. I understand maybe who's going to be interviewing me, some key people. I know, for example, the name of the CEO, basic things like that. You definitely don't want to be caught off guard. And the more research and preparation you can do beforehand, the better it's going to make you look and the more confident you're going to feel. What I found going into interviews is that the more preparation I did, it didn't necessarily help me tremendously in the interview, but it made me feel like I'd done everything I needed to do. So when I walked in the room, I wasn't anxious. I wasn't nervous. I didn't feel like maybe I skipped something or I didn't do enough prep. I knew that I came as prepared as I possibly could have and whatever happens, happens. That's the mindset I like to go into things with. Look, I've done whatever I could. I've prepared, I spent the time, I put in the hours. If I fail, I fail. There's nothing more I could have done. If I succeed, great, then all of it paid off. Personally, that's my mindset. I don't know, that worked for me and just kind of helped me stay calm in the interviews, which I think is really important. So anyways, guys, that's it. That's what I would do to land a software engineering internship. By no means is this easy. By no means do I guarantee this is going to work for everyone, but this is personally the strategy I would employ. I think this would definitely give me some level of success, especially if I was targeting those smaller and mid-sized companies and was just trying to get my foot in the door with that first piece of experience. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. If you want to join that dev launch program, again, there's only going to be 10 spots. So click the link below and join the waitlist. And I look forward to seeing you there.